Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to create custom right click functionality or custom context menu for your website using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now here we can see we have this division and if I right click over here, we have this custom right click menu or context menu. And if I right click somewhere else, we can see that we have the default right click menu of the browser. But if I right click somewhere inside this division, we have this uh, custom right click menu. So let's get started. Right here I have created this folder called custom right click and I just opened it with VS code. Now let's start by creating the necessary files. So first of all let's create an HTML file. So let's click on new file and I'll just name it index.html. And then we need to have a CSS file. So let's click on new file and I'll just type style.css. And we also need to have a JavaScript file. So let's create a new file and I'll just name it main.js. Right, let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code you have this shortcut where you can just press exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And here I'll also link our CSS file so I'll just type link and press tab. And in the href I'll just type style.css. And here in the body I'll just link the JavaScript file. So here I'll just type script colon src and press tab. And in the src I'll just type main.js. Right now let's start with the HTML. Now first of all let's create a division and I'll just give it a class of card. And in that I'll just type testing. And now let's open this in our browser. So I have this extension called live server installed in VS Code. So just search for live server over here and just install that. And once you do that you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. And here we can see that the design is being displayed over here in the browser. Right now let's write the HTML for the context menu. So if you right click over here we can see that we have these options. So let's write the HTML for this. Now for this we'll create a division with the class of custom context menu. Now for all these options we'll create a UL and in that we'll have list items and in the list items we will have anchor tags and in that we will have the options so I'll just type download and I'll just copy this uh, list item from here and paste it down here. I'll just paste it two more times and the next option we have is edit so I'll just type edit over here and uh, then we have duplicate and uh, lastly we have more info. Now let's go back to our design and here we can see we have these menu items. All right now let's style this using CSS. Now we have already linked our CSS file over here so let's go to our style.css file and first of all we'll just style the card so I'll just type dot card over here and for this we will have a height of 200 pixels and also a width of 200 pixels and we'll give it a background color of E63946 and we'll also have rounded corners so I'll just have border radius and I'll just set it to 20 pixels and I'll just bring this text to the center so for that I'll just set the display to flex and align items to the center and justify content to the center and I'll also set the font family to Roboto sans serif and uh, I'll set the text color to white and also the font size to 20 pixels. Right now let's style the custom context menu. So here we can see we have this division with the class of custom context menu. So let's target that. So here I'll just type custom context menu and I'll just set the width to 200 pixels. And now let's style the anchor tags. So I'll just type custom context menu ULLIA. And the first thing we will do is we'll remove these underlines. So for that we'll just type text decoration and we'll set it to none. And we'll set the font family to Roboto. Now let's add some padding. So I'll just type padding and I will set the padding to 20 pixels top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right. Now the padding top and bottom are not working because uh, anchor tags are inline element by default. So we'll set the display to inline block. And now we can see that the padding is applied. Now we'll also set the font size to 16 pixels and uh, we will set the font weight to bold. And let's set the color of the text to dark gray. Now we'll set a border bottom for these anchor tags. So let's type border bottom. And we'll set it to 1 pixel solid. And we'll set the color to RGBA 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.1. So this last value over here is the opacity. So here we can see we have these borders for the anchor tags. Now here we can see that we don't have full width for each of these anchor tags. So if we just add a background color we can see that we don't have full width. So let's set the width to 
Now the anchor tags have a lot of width than the width of the context menu that we set over here, 200 pixels. Now that's because we have added this padding over here. So if I just remove this padding, we have the correct width. But since we added the padding, we have a lot of width because the padding is also added to the width. Now to stop this from happening, you can just type box sizing and set it to border box. And now we can see we have the correct width. Now let's remove this background color from here. All right, now let's add a hover effect for these anchor tags. So for that, let's type custom context menu, ULLIA colon hover. And we will add a background color of F1FAEE. -E. And now if you hover over this, we can see that we have this background color. And we'll also add a smooth transition. So let's type transition. And we'll set all to 400 milliseconds ease. And now we can see we have this background color. We'll also add a border on the left when we hover over these elements. So let's type border left and we'll set it to 4 pixels solid and I'll just type red over here. And now we can see we have this red border when we hover over this. But we can see that uh, it is changing positions when we hover over these elements. So for that let's add the border to the normal state as well. So here I'll just type border left four pixels solid and here I'll just set the color to transparent and now if you hover over this we can see that everything works all right now let's remove these bullets from here and we'll also remove the margin and padding inside the UL so let's type custom context menu UL and we'll set the list style to none and we'll also remove the margin and padding now for the context menu, we will also add a box shadow. So let's scroll up and here I'll just type box shadow and we'll set the values to 0, 4 pixels, 8 pixels, negative 2 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.3. Alright, now the last thing we need to do is we don't want to display this context menu by default. So here I'll just set the opacity to 0 and now we can see that the context menu is not being displayed but we can still click on the links over here. So if we hover over this, we can see that we have the option to click the links. So here I'll also set the pointer events to none. And now if we hover over this area, we can see that we cannot click on the links. And now we're going to add a class called active and you can name this class anything you want. Now when we add that class, we will set the opacity back to one and the pointer events back to auto. So let's type that over here. So I'll just type custom context menu dot active and I'll just set the opacity back to one and also the pointer events to auto and for smooth transition I'll also type transition and I'll just set it to all 500 milliseconds ease now we need to add a couple more lines of CSS code but before that let's go ahead and add some JavaScript and add this class active when we right click over here on this element so for that first of all we need to access the elements in our JavaScript so if we go back to our HTML we can see that we have this division with the class of card and we also have this division with the class of custom context menu so these are the two things we need to reference in our JavaScript. So let's go to a JavaScript file and uh, let's type const card and I'll just set it to document dot query selector and I'll just set it to dot card and then we'll create a constant for the custom context menu. So I'll just type custom context menu and I'll just set it to document dot query selector and uh, here I'll just type custom context menu. Now let's add an event listener for the card. So let's type card dot add event listener. Now here for the event we have to type context menu. Now this will let us know whether the user has right clicked on the card. So here I'll just create an arrow function. And here we need to add the active class to the custom context menu. So let's type custom context menu dot class list dot add. And here we'll just type active. All right now let's right click over here. And here we can see we have the custom context menu displayed over here. But we also have the default one displayed over here. So we need to stop this from happening. So for that we have to access the event. So for the event we can just add a variable name over here. You can add any name over here. I'll just type E for event. And here we'll just type E dot prevent default. So this will prevent the default context menu from appearing over here. So let's right click over here. And now we can see that we have our custom context menu displayed over here. And if you right click somewhere other than the card, then we can see that the default context menu is being displayed over here. Right now when we left click somewhere, this context menu should disappear. 
So for that, let's type window, which will select the complete window. And I'll just type dot add image listener. And I'll just type click over here. And when we left click somewhere, we'll just remove the active class from the custom context menu. So let's type custom context menu dot class list dot remove active. Right now, when we right click somewhere else, we can see that we have the default context menu. And if you right click over here in this card, we have the custom context menu displayed over here. And when we left click somewhere, it disappears. So everything is working all right. Now, the last thing we need to do is uh, we need to set the position of the context menu. So if you go back to our original design, here we can see when we right click over here, the context menu appears from this position. And if we right click over here, then it appears from this position. So we have to set the position of the context menu based on where we right click. So let's go back to our design. Now to get the position of where you clicked, you can use a property called client X and client Y. So let's create a variable called top position. And I'll just set it to E, which is the event dot client Y. And let's create one more variable and I'll just type left position. And I'll just type E dot client X. Now let's go back to our uh, CSS and for the custom context menu, we will set the position to fixed so that we can position it based on the mouse click position. So let's go back to our JavaScript file and here let's set the left position of the context menu to this left position variable. So let's type custom context menu dot style dot left and we'll just set it to left position. And we need to add it in pixels. So let's type plus and here I'll just type pixels in double quotes. And let's type custom context menu dot style dot top and we'll just set it to top position. And I'll just type pixels over here. All right now let's see whether it works. So let's right click over here. And now we can see that our context menu is being displayed over here from this position. And if we right click over here, we can see that it starts from this position. Now we have a couple of issues to fix. First of all, we need to set a background color for this context menu. So let's go back to our style.css file and let's go to the anchor tag. And here we'll just add a background color of white. Right now it looks all right. Now when we right click over here, we can see that it moves from this position to this position and it has this animation. Now if you want this type of effect, you can keep this. But if you don't want to animate the positions, then you can go back to the context menu. So here we can see that we have set transition of all. So we have to delete all from here and we have to type opacity. And now if you right click over here, we can see that it is starting from the correct position. And we also don't have the animation for the position. So that's basically how you create a custom right click menu functionality or custom context menu for your website. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.